Here yeah, class, uh, this is part two of anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, and we'll talk about rheumatoid arthritis. So, due to inappropriate activation of our immune system, that result in inflammation leading to uh, immune-mediated release diseases, in this case rheumatoid arthritis and autoimmune disease. And basically, a final outcome, you have degradation of cartilage. Uh, joint erosion, significant pain, and reduction in uh, quality of life, as in diagram comparing normal joint to osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, the difference between an, uh, osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, as you can see, in rheumatoid arthritis you can have bone erosion, whereas in osteoarthritis you have uh, thinning of the cartilage. Pharmacal therapy of rheumatoid arthritis, um, similarly also osteoarthritis is that uh, include anti-inflammatory or immunosuppressive agent. Anti-inflammatory uh, drug come in like NSAID and the COX-2 inhibitor, uh, COX-2 inhibitor. Uh, there used to be uh, two or three COX-2 inhibitor, but right now there's only uh, one Celebrex uh, because the Viox was withdrawn. Uh, from the market because of cause increase in terms of stroke and heart attack in patient. Uh, Celebrex still have uh, some of those warning side effect, but it is not uh, as common compared to Vioxx, so that's why it's still available. Acetaminophen, Tylenol, disease modifying anti rheumatic drug, the DMATS, and uh, also, in addition, uh, patients with rheumatoid arthritis need to uh, be on low dose of corticosteroid to help with anti-inflammation and uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy. This is modifying anti-rheumatic agent on uh, the DMATS. Uh, they have been shown to slow the course of disease, induce remission, and prevent further, further destruction of the joints and involved tissue. Most of these agents are actually contraindicated for uh, use in pregnant women because they do have the teratogenicity. So what choice of edema to use? Usually the rheumatologist will uh, try different uh, drugs and maybe a different combination is necessary and usually begin with methotrexate or hydroxychloroquine and followed by the use of the new uh, uh, immunosuppressant in a sense lifronomide, the tissue necrotic factor inhibitor uh, like some of those uh, antibody type of drugs usually when you see MAP at the end it's an antibody uh, drug monoclonal antibody MAB or combination therapy often used. Methotrexate uh, is an immunosuppressant and it can solve the appearance of new erosion but usually slow onset of action. It takes three to six weeks. And methotrexate or Trexol uh, was the drug first discovered to treat cancer uh, so it's more of a cancer therapy, but in cancer therapy it's a much higher dose. In this case here for rheumatoid arthritis it's a much lower dose. And once a uh, weak dosing, and usually if a patient on uh, long term use of methotrexate, uh, they uh, may have the risk of like mucosal ulceration, nausea, uh, decrease in blood cell count. So leucovorin uh, QD once a day can reduce their methotrexate side effect. Hydroxychloroquine, in this case, uh, the drug was originally uh, used for malaria, but then it found to have effect on rheumatoid arthritis as well. So it can be combined with methotrexate uh, for early rheumatoid arthritis. Um, but one thing to keep in mind here, hydroxychloroquine, also known as Plaquenil, and it can cause ocular toxicity. Example here is the bull's eye retinopathy, uh, plaquenil retinopathy. Glucocorticoids can be used 
as well, just to help with the information. So cortisol is the principal human uh, glucocorticoid, and glucocorticoid are known as potent anti-inflammatory drug. They are more potent than the NSAID class of drug. Uh, they are commonly used in patients with rheumatoid arthritis to uh, bridge the time until the DMATs are effective. So you can start DMATs together with glucocorticoid while glucocorticoid working. Uh, DMATs is, uh, usually take about three uh, weeks to, to, to start to have effect. So usually low dose of prednisone. Prednisone is the glucocorticoid of choice. You will see about 10 milligram. And usually when patients are on glucocorticoid or steroid, they need to be slowly tapered off from steroid to prevent rebound uh, inflammation. So since we're going to get into an antibody, this is a nomenclature that you want to know because later on uh, in your practice, you will see uh, some of the monoclonal antibody uh, drugs so you know what they mean. So usually when you have OMAP, it's for a murine monoclonal antibody. And if it's like CMAP, it's a chimeric. So about 65% of the antibody is uh, from a human. A humanized monoclonal antibody, you have ZUMAP and 95%. And then you have UMAP by itself, it's human uh, monoclonal antibody, it's fully uh, human antigen used to raise the antibody. And then you have SEPT, SEPT usually indicate uh, that it is a receptor antibody fusion protein uh, that mimics an immunoglobulin. So biologic therapy have been uh, shown to work very well in rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Uh, interleukin-1 and tissue necrotic factor alpha are the pro-inflammatory cytokine involved in the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. The tissue necrotic factor inhibitor like etanercept, adalimumab, infliximab, golimumab, and sotolizumab uh, are some of the tissue necrotic factor inhibitor uh, that use and have uh, been shown to decrease sign and symptom of rheumatoid arthritis. And usually, as I said, they tend to be uh, used in combination too. Like for instance, uh, the rheumatologist will start the patient on methotrexate, uh, hydroxychloroquine, and if it's not working too well, then we'll combine it with like the tissue necrotic factor inhibitor. And as an example here, you have etanercept uh, plus methotrexate, and it's much better in terms of the rate of remission compared to each one of them uh, by itself. Next disease is gout, and we kind of touch on gout a little bit uh, in uh, 540 last semester. Uh, but here we just elaborate a little bit more. So it's characterized by high level of uric acid in the blood. And when you have high uric acid in the blood and also um, with increase in terms of acidity uh, around the joint, then you get precipitate of uh, uric acid. And that's where you get uh, sodium urate, uh, uric acid precipitation. Uh, and then that will start an inflammatory process when you have precipitation of uric acid that we could uh, leukocyte or white blood cell to go uh, to the joint to try to clear it up and that's where you get a lot of inflammation going on. So when you have inflammatory process that can generate oxygen metabolite uh, and then you have oxidative damage of the tissue and that's the problem with gout. So here uh, the pathogenesis of gout, you uh, start to have purine, uh, nucleotide metabolism, and then you have the end product of uh, uric acid. And as you can see, a lot of purinol, which is uh, a drug that can inhibit uh, xanthine uh, oxidase. And the other one on the right side here in the panel, colchicine. Colchicine actually will uh, uh, disrupt the tubulin um, production and will uh, minimize the uh, movement of leuco uh, leukocyte or white blood cell uh, into the uh, joint to cause inflammation. So that's how cotrigine, uh work. 
So a thera therapeutic strategy by uh, lowering uric acid below the saturation point of 6 mg per deciliter. So you can interfere with the uric acid synthesis with allopurinol or the newer uh, xanthine oxidase uh, inhibitor Febusostat to increasing uric acid excretion with uh, probenicid or uh, sulfenpyrazone. Um, these two agents are considered the uricouric agents, so they help to increase the excretion of uric acid, uricouric agent. Three, inhibiting leukocyte entry into the affected joint with cochicin. As I said, cochicin basically inhibit, inhibit tubulin uh, simply, and that will prevent the movement of leukocyte into the site. Uh, administration of NSAID to help with uh, some of the pain, some of the inflammation. Acute management, usually indomethacin and other NSAID, but not aspirin. As we mentioned, aspirin is actually uh, contraindicated uh, in terms of people with gout because it inhibits the uh, uric acid secretion. Intraticular administration of glucocorticoid uh, may work as well uh, if you have a few uh, locations that is needed. Chronic management, so you use uh, the uric agent like probenicid or sulfenpyrazone to increase the excretion of uric acid. Uh, the use of uh, allopurinol or uh, febuso start to inhibit the xanthine oxidase in some biosynthesis of uric acid. Cochicin, uh, it used to be used for acute uh, management, but now um, other drug that are more effective for acute management. Your cochicin now are usually used in prophylaxis uh, to prevent recurrent attack and uh, its goal is just to inhibit uh, white blood cells to go into the area to uh, create inflama inflammation. That's it.